Hello everyone and welcome to the Navi Times Talk from the Heart. When we think of design, we think about interior design, fashion design and in some instances even architecture. However, there's much, much more to design. Our guests today are Rebani Saha and Deepak Patania. Before we continue a small introduction about our guests, Rebani uh, Saha is a graduate of the National Institute of Design, Ahmedabad, and has majored in industrial design. She set up Mosaic in 2001, and her experience covers the award-winning Spa Jeva at Taj Exotica, appliance design for IFP Industries, lighting design for Crompton Electricals, locomotive cabs and interiors, along with design support for MSMEs and startups. She is part of Kokum Design Trust, an initiative that champions design in the public domain. This in initiative successfully hosted a social design festival 2020 in Panjim and actively maps social design efforts onto the socialdesignlibrary.in website in an attempt to demonstrate how design can work for society. She believes design practice is a reflection of design thinking. Deepak Patania is a compulsive inventor, an industrial designer from NID Ahmedabad as well, who's been running his multidisciplinary design firm, Design Intervention, since 1998. He's a YouTube educator and now also a med tech entrepreneur who's in the process of launching a multi-purpose mask that would be ba used across various industries, including healthcare. In addition, he's part of the Education Committee of GCCI since the last six years. Rebani and Deepak, thank you so much for coming on our show. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for... Likewise. It's nice being here. Thank you. Like I said in my introduction, there is a lot of ambiguity when it comes to design. Design is, is so huge, it's a huge, huge umbrella, but we really can't differentiate. I mean, I think that it, it is a very unexplored territory as far as people are concerned. They are not sure about what it is all about. So how would you say art, design, and engineering and architecture, of course, are different from each other? Rebani, let's start with you. Um, it's, it's like a sliding scale. I see it as, um, uh, an engineer would be practical, looking at uh, extremely practical issues and technology. And art would be uh, handling the ethereal and, um, you know, the, the space that is metaphorical. So you have a sliding scale. And design is something that has to sort of amalgamate these two and uh, give you something that s serves people basically it has to serve people in the end like an applied art but again uh, different from engineering in the sense that it is people facing so that is really uh, the design space the way I see it so y what you're trying to say is the, the thing that makes design stand out is that it has to help and benefit people in s at some point somewhere yes it's is people facing it is so so an engineer might uh, work on the engine of a car but um, as soon as there's an interface with a person, that's where a designer would come in. And uh, you have to be a dreamer and an artist in order to really have a vision or, you know, be able to visualize things that come in the future. So you need to draw on both sides. So uh, what would you say? Are you a dreamer or are you a designer? Oh, pff, very difficult to say. I is mean, I, I'm straddling both fields and it is tough, but... I think I'm just square in the middle. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Deepak? What, how would you differentiate between uh, these <coughs> disciplines? So when it, I totally agree with what Reb is saying. Um, but when, uh, when it comes to art, I feel that art is, it's like a self-expression of uh, 
what you want to say, whether you want to say it for yourself, for the, for the world, for any social cause, it could be for anything, but it's a self-expression. Design that way, for example, has to serve a purpose. You have, you have a clear agenda of what you want to create. I mean, that agenda can have some little tweaks here and there, as, because as you learn more about something, you may need to change your uh, whole uh, direction. But at the same time, there's a clear purpose that needs to be solved and you have to attain it at the end of it. There is a success and a failure of, of a lot of money that is being put in based on what you come up with. So that is one of the clear definition, distinctions there. Engineering, it's measurable. Yeah, it's sorry, measurable. measurable, yeah. yeah. And uh, that way, uh, and it, the way I've seen always notice things uh, different from how engineering works, because engineering is very close to at least an industrial design part of uh, uh, the design uh, whole world. Uh, as an engineer, what I've noticed um, is that if the solution, like when you're working on a solution, when you're working on an objective there also, the uh, solutions are uh, one plus one plus one plus one. It is not, so a, a designer looks at these problems and all these uh, so problems that come on the way as a holistic, uh, with a holistic approach where you're looking at the entire thing at all the times. You're working on a small thing, but at the same time you have a helicopter view of the overall thing. And sometimes one thing changes and it helps something else, which I've seen, which is the one thing that I've seen very different from an engineering approach where it's a very one plus one, it's a very mathematical straightforward approach. Also required, very importantly required uh, from, from a point of view that that's how make, make uh, structures work and things stable and uh, everything uh, the, like engines work and all that. But then it doesn't leave any uh, uh, leeway for creativity and coming out with something new. That's engineering and, you're talking about. No, uh, uh, engineering. And, and <coughs> when, we, when the same thing we do as design, uh, there, is, uh, there is always that thing where, while, we're, uh, while we're exploring, we're always questioning at every stage. And that questioning uh, keeps leading to new things. So the com coming out with something new is much, much more prevalent in design. So that's how the, uh, the, there are differences between design, engineering. Yeah. So from what both of you have said, and I'm sure the viewers will agree with me, that what comes out is creativity and practicality. Am I right? Or not? Uh, would you yes. agree? Yes. Uh, and a lot of process that goes of behind, behind mm, it. Yes. Yeah, but the outcome is, yeah. Mm, yes, that is. Now, like with every discipline and like with every industry, within this you know, under this huge umbrella, there are also subdivisions. So in design, what are these different fields that are there? So, Do you want to uh -huh. take that? So uh, broadly, now the things are changing very uh, quite, uh, quite, bi uh, quite a bit and very fast now, but broadly there, uh, at least in the, in the last century, in the beginning of this century, there were three major streams of design as such which was industrial design, communication design, and textile. Within, within industrial design, you had furniture design, you had product design, you had automotive. ceramics, or you have automotive. There are, uh, there are, there are these subdivisions. So you, spe you, you, uh, uh, you study industrial design, but you specialize in uh, one of the fields. Uh, in, in terms of communication design, th that's where you get uh, branding, graphics, exhibitions, you get, exhibitions, you get uh, video, filmmaking, mm -hmm. animation, all that mm -hmm. comes under communication design. Mm -hmm. And then you have the whole range of textiles where you could be either developing textiles or using textiles uh, for fashion. So fashion is not a uh, like direct part, but it's also a part of design. Now you, in the introduction, I said you own and run a multidisciplinary company yeah. so what exactly like do you yeah. do all the things that you've just mentioned or is there one field that you specialize in uh, so what happens is that many times like when I started the uh, when I started my company in 98 um, India was really booming at that time and there were new things happening TV channels were coming out many TV channels were coming out so there was a lot of work happening and there was a lot of work that a design studio could do so we started doing industrial design but at the same time, when we started doing industrial design... May I, may I interrupt? Yeah. 
when you say industrial design, can yeah. you give us an example of what you were doing? Um, we were doing uh, products like uh, ATMs and kiosks and vending, uh, the, right. uh, the um, information kiosks that were in banks, like HSBC Bank had this first information kiosk which was designed by us. So we did a lot of uh, banking kiosks and ATMs. Uh, we got a good chance of doing set design for uh, television studios, for Channel V, MTV. So we, uh, there are some things we could directly do. We, as in there, there was always uh, uh, there was a team. there was a team, and there was a partner who was a graphic designer, and I was an industrial designer. So between us, we could handle a lot of projects. But there is a method in the madness because we we also did animation, but we got in an animator during that time. We also did building projects. We got in an uh, architect at that time. So we had the we we made sure that there is a necessary skill set is always there. But we got to do a lot of varied projects from uh, like I said I, from animation to uh, um, like kiosks and everything <laughs> else under the sun. Yeah, kiosks to branding for mm. film publicity and things like that, and uh, proper branding for companies mm. and stuff. So the whole range, but there was always there was always uh, somebody who knows the job, and there was us who who were there to also support give, give, and give help. Give you that directed. little extra that what clients come mm. to us for, because that is what happens if a client likes you, then they said well, we are doing this building, but can you also do this for us? Because they wanted to go through you because they like the way you think, and that's how some studios actually grow into various disciplines. And so that's creativity get the comes back again yeah, into yeah, the picture, yeah, like yeah. I have mentioned, yeah. and. Uh, you said that you were doing all these TV se uh, sets and things like that, yeah. so that uh, you were before in Mumbai. Yeah. Let yeah. me come to the way, I'm sure yeah. all our viewers are waiting to listen to this. What got you, and even Rebini, yeah. what got you guys to Goa? I know it's a beautiful state, I love Goa, but uh, what was it that attracted you all? Uh, for me, uh, one thing was beyond a point you have to leave mumbai that is that is the first part <laughs> you can't, i agree you can't you can't it's it's a beautiful place to start your journey it's a, it's a beautiful place to work because the kind of opportunities you get there are phenomenal but beyond a point like when my kid was five years old the idea was to leave the big city and come to a small place where he also goes to a school and, a, and leads a normal life the kind of lives that we led when we were growing up so, so where did you grow up? Um, actually, all over the place because I, my, I was, my I, dad was in the army. I, I knew this answer was coming, <laughs> all over the place, yeah. yes, <laughs> of course. So, <laughs> so mm. small towns, big towns, everything. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and then finally Mumbai. Yeah. Yeah, and Mumbai is 17 years and then uh, then decided that uh, we had to leave uh, uh, and then the Goa was a very good destination because here it just seems to be you, you, you could get your time, you could think about, you don't have to waste time traveling. That was one of my biggest <coughs> peeves in uh, Bombay, that you waste some three or four, four hours, hours of your life every yes. day traveling. So here suddenly, I, I used and I used to come to Goa for, uh, we were doing some projects where the execution was happening in Goa to a factory. So for almost one year, twice a month actually, I used to come to Goa for that work. So I had seen Goa inside, uh, inside from the work point of view and I realized that this is the place, so this is a very good option. So, and our options were actually Goa and Cape Town because that's where my partner went. <laughs> but Cape Town was too far for, for so friends are, and we, family, but similar kind of situation so, there also. So, we are glad that Deepak <laughs> chose, and as well as Revani, <coughs> chose to come to Goa. Revani, what is your story? How, why Goa? How Goa? Um, well, uh, my story is that I came straight to Goa um, after my uh, training and uh, passing out from NID. And um, I think I had a feeling that I didn't want the peer pressure that comes uh, in cities where you're always looking over your shoulder, what's happening there, what's happening there. You have to earn so much because so-and-so is earning so much. And Goa was a complete greenfield uh, experiment. So you could come here, you could actually uh, work at your own pace and do the things you wanted to do without that. And it was interesting because when I first came here, my needs were very little. I started at 2,000 rupees a month. So, mm -hmm. and, and I went with my uh, favorite projects. I went to companies and uh, the, at that time, Photophone was there. Uh, they used to make cameras and overhead projectors. So I went with a, with a particular project and I said, look, uh, please let's have this design come out because my joy was that it would come out first. And uh, do this and I come cheap, just 2,000, but please get this out there. 
So that's how I, we started. I'm sure you've not kept through that to read because then <laughs> no. everyone will be at your doorstep, Rebni. <laughs> They're learning about <laughs> it. Th that's the advantage of coming when uh, when you're just starting right. out. Mm. So, right. I mean, that's that was my story, and mm. I've loved it ever since. And the whole world has come to Goa now. So I know I mean, the whole I'm world. Okay. That's right. The whole world <laughs> is in Goa. Yeah. I've come to Goa. It's been 22 uh, years, but yeah. for mm. me, it has back mm. to my roots this is where my ancestors who I came from so getting so back I, I just wanted to add one thing one of the uh, like I said I used to keep coming there and I could I could assess the situation and one of the things that I uh, definitely that was one of the big points why I came here was the fact that I wanted to start my own uh, for example YouTube channel and a science show and a couple of things I wanted to start and in Bombay uh, Almost everybody has this dream that they want to start this and you can't do it because the rat race is too strong for you to get out of. And expensive. And expensive. I mean, everything so expensive. Here, everything was such that actually you could take a break for two years from earning because you have earned enough. You would take a break from for, and build something new. And that was possible in Goa. And it wasn't far away from Bombay, Bangalore. It, it, yeah. All that accessibility, access, accessibility was there. But the cost of living, the cost of doing things, the cost of experimenting and the willingness of people to support you out here is phenomenal. It's something I think else that, only. that is extremely yeah. important, yeah. that willingness. Like yeah. Rebani said, you know, in the cities, you're always looking over your shoulder. Yeah. Here it is like, I, we, you know, just the other day we had a, um, Mr. Naranan on our show and we spoke about, you know, being happy, being content is very different from complacency. Mm. And I think we Goans know how yeah. to mm. be content. Yeah. It's not complacency. So people are very, uh, so far, they're yeah. very, very kind and yeah. they're very open to new ideas. Mm -hmm. Now, you said, you know, design, we, we see design everywhere. We see design everywhere. So Generally bad design. <laughs> 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 um, now you are I'll be the honest expert. About it. <laughs> You've derailed her. Now. You, I'm sorry. You, you are the expert, and I really wouldn't be able to gauge that. But mm. when we look at certain things, you know, you look at a building or you look at something, a product, and we say, "Wow, this looks so good." So I'm really not the expert here. You mm. guys are the experts. So you, of course, you all have your opinions. But uh, in in industry and in other areas, designed is used. Can you give us a few examples in Goa itself? So, you know, we can connect. We know exactly what you're talking about. Of good examples, give us some good examples. Please, De Deepak, mm -hmm. I'm telling you yeah. not to give us bad examples. <laughs> <laughs> <Enough So. of laughs> yeah, bad examples yes. are enough of. No. So, yeah. Rebani also, some good examples, Rebani, that in Goa that you can give us? Well, in Goa, it's, it's a little difficult, uh, firstly, because there's not that much industry here. And if, if I go by uh, um, an industrial product, I have, uh, I have evolved my view of what is good design. So something that merely looks good uh, so that it can sell well, I have moved a little beyond it, even though that is an ask from us as industrial designers. Uh, good design is really something that should fit into your life without you thinking and just make your life better for it. Uh, it's not something that should dance in front of you and say, hey, I'm looking good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, it is difficult, but you do see design, like if you walk into a showroom, you can look at uh, washing machines or things like that. It's, it's all been designed, right? People have worked on it so that there is a cost uh, and it is built to a cost and it looks good. So mm -hmm. in that sense, yes, that you see a design around. Good design in Goa, I don't know. Um, Maybe some architectural examples yes, are there. Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, you do have architecture that uh, allows for good cross ventilation, especially for the monsoons, um, that uses uh, local material. You do have architecture like that, and that is good design, as opposed, and with good overhangs uh, that doesn't make your walls leak, I mean, you know, with, with uh, moisture. Mm, things like that, that's good design. But uh, yeah, but uh, product-wise, yeah. I don't know really. And uh, w one category of design is also in the UI, UX, and stuff like that. Yeah. No, that is also part. It, so digital. It's, user digital is also part of design, and, and yeah. there's a lot of interesting stuff that is happening yeah. from, from on that yes. uh, front in yes. Goa. I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like we have just spoken, there in design there is a lot, a big role 
is played by creativity. How is innovation and design, how do they go hand in hand? So, uh, see innovation is a very, I would say a very important uh, ingredient that needs to be in, in design. Because design is otherwise a process that you follow and with, with, within the process you have to use creativity at all, all times and then come up with a solution. And that solution, if it's the more innovative it is, the more it stands out from the ordinary. And I would also, I always uh, take innovation and invention as two separate things because innovation is an incremental improvement on things and invention is something that you come up with something new totally. And if you reach that level, then it's even better. But innovation, I, I would see, is the minimum that uh, needs to be there in, in, in design, in, in, design yeah, in any kind of creative uh, activity. Have you, I'm putting him on the spot now, have you created something that you're really proud of and you can share with us and tell us, you know, that it has been very innovative. Rebani, this also applies to you. Is there anything? I know I'm putting you on the spot, but... Um, a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> I can, should I take out my no, list? No, 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 no. <laughs> no I, I really don't believe. But that. I'll also be very <laughs> honest saying that it's not necessarily that everything does well in the market. Yeah. So there are many times where you, like I came up with a, a standing desk uh, on which you could do uh, 14 exercises, full body exercises. But I came up with it in 2017 and launched it and didn't do too well because we didn't have marketing budgets and all that. It was a self, uh, this thing project. But had I done it in 2020 where everybody, the world was looking for work from home and all that, that same product could have been very successful. But that time I couldn't do this because I started doing, I set up a company doing a mask, which is again in, in the innovation. And uh, in fact, that's, we have filed it as a patent. It's an invention. So we, we are three months away from getting the patent now. That's exciting. Congratulations. Yeah. We're yeah. all waiting to mm. see that mask. I'm sure we are going to be using <laughs> it. <laughs> Revenue, what about you? Is there anything mm. or any pet project of yours that you would like to share with us? Um, yeah, well, much like Deepak said, um, a lot of the things that we come out with are not necessarily things that uh, make it to the market or are successes. But uh, there have been certain things like um, a simple intervention. You all have traveled by overnight bus, okay, right. from Bombay and Pune. And much of India travels by bus. The thing is that uh, when you reach uh, in, on, a, on a seating arrangement, you end up quite tired. And for the executives that need to go to, say, Bombay, finish their work and come back, it just takes the life out of you. It does. The other option is a sleeper, where you cannot get up. So and if you do get up, you will hit your head. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, they have these little boots yes. like the yes. So we figured that there is actually a space in the market. Uh, they can command a premium. We can stack in a double-decker mode the most relaxed way of sitting, which is like a dentist chair. So the, there is no excess weight on any part of your body, you're nicely cradled, and you can actually sleep and get, a, get good rest that way. And we figure out uh, an intermediate from 40 seats to uh, maybe 20 or 24 sleepers, we could fit in about 36 people in this manner. So if a bus company decides to charge a little premium, they can actually make money and they can use this innovative uh, arrangement. Um, but as it happened, the market was not ready. It was too fragmented. I mean, there was no single authority or company we could go to to get this done um, because seat manufacturers are different from um, the bus service guys and uh, Mercedes who makes the chassis is different. So each one is not going to make this decision per se. They have so, to collaborate. Yeah, so there was no, uh, that it was too fragmented. Now, if you look at the market, all the airlines, every week I see these new designs coming up out about new ways of stacking and how to sit in an interesting way and not get tired. And it's like half of those designs are the ones that we have. And we actually went around to companies showcasing this and saying, look, we can do this for you and get ARAI certification for you. But you need to put down X amount. But nobody was willing to put down that money. So if you ask about innovations, there's plenty. There's like, plenty. Uh, but Right. You, you know, you just said that you, you came up with these chairs or seats mm. where the, 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 the body, the weight of the body is distributed evenly. Mm. So that means there is a lot of uh, 
studying and research that has to be done about a human body, where yes. the weight is, where yes. you know, where is it less, yes. and so on and so forth. So that yes. must have taken a lot of time. It did, and it came out because we were doing work for the bus industry, so we sort of understood what the scene was. But in that way, I think all designers, based on who their clients are, they get those eureka moments and they have these ideas, and you know, some can make it forward. Right. So, uh, yeah, and I wanted to add to that because it's a very important point that you uh, uh, you notice that the the fact that so much has gone behind it, yes. and that's something I think the viewers and people need should need to know because yes. because a lot of people think that design is the final clothes that you wear Correct. and how you look. It's not that. Mm. It is about the whole body. It, uh, the f the earlier the, st uh, the design uh, comes into the process mm. along with the engineering and Mac is a good example of that where there is a design, uh, design happening at every component level and not just the user experience and all that. So that is, that's a very good example of how, how a design-led company has actually changed how things, products work and how things look and how companies behave in fact. So it's very important to know that there is so much that goes be beyond, behind it. that and it's not just the end clothes that you see. Right, yeah. very true. Yeah. And you know, today everybody talks about sustainability and it is yeah. a word that is used very loosely. Yeah. How are design and sustainability connected? I mean, like you said, not everybody designs things for sustainability. Mm -hmm. They are more interested, of course, in, in you know making their money. But um, according to you all, how can it work? How is there a way that we can work with it? You know, sustainability and design. Yeah. Well, um, design, by definition, is the overall view of things, right? So right. you have to take everything into perspective at all points in time. So now when you talk sustainability, it is part of our ecosystem that things are going wrong. Can you use a raw material which is, which is eco-friendly? What happens when it's thrown away? What about the glue that you use? All this is part of our, what Deepak called the helicopter view. At every point in time, so even if somebody wants us to design this mug, um, if they say, okay, sustainable today, I will now say that, okay, how is how are ceramics treated is one of the biggest problems. You can't really crush ceramics that easily. It's, it's going into landfill. So I may say, okay, can I use coconut fiber? And uh, then I would have to look at what are the existing products there? Uh, what is eco-friendly? Uh, can I get it cheap, the raw material? Very otherwise, important. Yes, Very otherwise important. This, this mug is gonna cost, uh, you know, 1,000 rupees uh, versus ceramics, which is now maybe 50, right? So this is, um, Yes, it, it is part of our design process to think about what is the current system that is affecting what we are doing for going forward. So that's how it's related. I don't know if I've really right. answered no, yeah, it. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there yeah. are, like he said, you need to get a 360 degree view. Yeah. Yeah. It, it cannot be just this. I'm looking yeah. at this, I want to make money. How do I make money? So yeah. design does work with creativity and a lot of hard work, like mm. you all have said. Mm. I mean, that part where you said, you know, the the weight of the body, and the first thought that came to mind was, oh my goodness, she knows exactly where the weight of the body mm. is. So there's a lot of work that goes mm. in sustainability. Getting to you, uh, Deepak, I don't know if our viewers have ever seen his videos. He has videos where he teaches a lot about science. And there was one video since I was going to interview him, I did watch this video about, I think it was a Hua, how the Hua craft oh. works. There was some CD you had <laughs> taken and stuff. I didn't have a whole CD, otherwise I would have definitely tried it. But, you know, um, education and today design are hand in hand. I mean, you mm. are yep. an example of that. They work hand in hand. And it's such a fantastic way, a creative way to teach children through these videos. How do you see this industry moving ahead? And right mm. now, what is what is it? What mm. is its position? Yeah. So, edtech in India is like becoming really big, and with Baiju's and so many more coming up behind them. And uh, I see uh, what's what's lacking very clearly is still the right amount or the right uh, authority of design within their programming or within the content that they have. 
uh, they, most, most people are actually using uh, very shortcut methods using motion graphics. It's a new tool that people have got and it's a tool to spread and all, but it's not, it's not perfect. So that's where I, I feel there is a lot of opportunity there and lots to be done by designers. And there are some things that we are actually also working with. We've, we've pitched uh, with one of the clients, uh, one of the big ed tech companies. We've uh, pitched with some five videos saying uh, concepts, saying that this is how you sh it should be taught. So, and luckily they have uh, uh, like uh, commissioned the project and we are working on it. But the idea is that it's, it should never be about technology, it should never be about uh, just scaling up, it should be about the content and how, how best uh, the kids learn. Teaching and learning, it's uh, communication and, yeah, finally, right? Yeah. And something. how best they learn and enjoy it while they're learning and that's something that uh, I've been, uh, like I've always wanted to do in my channel and all, but my channel is right now more towards DIY but now we are getting a new, this thing into EdTech as well. DIY but, is Yes. Yeah. No, um, you know, you said that, which is a very key word. Mm -hmm. I don't know if um, the audience have uh, heard that, but you said about enjoyment, that children yeah. need to to enjoy it because yeah. children, are, and today, they have so many options. Yeah. Why would I look at this when mm. I have this, 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 this? Yeah. Not just children I'm talking about, even yeah. otherwise, but children, yeah. their attention span is so short. So for them to actually sit and watch a video mm. needs to be enjoyable, needs yeah. that, you know, they, they like what it is. It's something innovative, something new. If it wasn't like that, yeah. they wouldn't watch um, you know, these mm. DIY videos yeah. that you have, so yeah. many of them, in fact. Yeah. Uh, that brings me to my um, next question, that today there is a very informal shift, and there are a lot of, uh, I. Correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong. There are design companies that are moving from uh, Mumbai, Bangalore, Delhi into Goa. Besides Goa being a, a beautiful state, uh, not having too much of um, traffic like you mentioned, what else is it, Rebani, that is uh, attracting designers into Goa? I would rephrase that. I wouldn't say designers. I'd say it's it's the the creative skill set the creative minds are are moving to goa so yes design is one of the many you have writers uh, you have entrepreneurs there are a lot of people who are moving base here uh, one is because of the beautiful space and uh, they have understood what it's like to be in a city versus uh, a place like goa which still has open space and the other thing is that um, uh, you can throw a stone and you'll hit somebody creative. It's like that because, uh, I mean, um, individuals have moved here and you are getting a growing talent pool that you can draw from. Uh, slowly but surely it is happening. So, so friends, you know, you tell your friends and they tell their friends and then that, that think bubble is there and after five years it's like, okay, I want to move. So that's how slowly people have, uh, you know, that's... So I wouldn't say design companies per se, but I will say uh, a large design uh, creative design creative, fraternity. The yeah. creative fraternity, I would yeah. say. The, the creative, creative fraternity. fraternity. What do you think, Deepak? What yeah, same. Yeah, it's it's a it's a whole shift of uh, the creative fraternity that the creative people that are coming here. Also, because uh, once you come here, there there is a different kind of energy here because see we are uh, out here we are dealing with like-minded people. It's very different because when I keep saying this that uh, uh, we all people who make things and people who make things are not breaking things. So it's, it's very different from other cities, you know. Very well put. <laughs> so very well put. Yeah. So uh, it's it's just nice. And when if I have some work where I need help, I mean, there's Rebni, there's so many friends. So immediately come go out. Mm -hmm. Nobody, uh, even if I'm I am a professional uh, project, uh, nobody will evaluate what kind of project you're doing. Is it if I help? Should it be money? Should be so basically so the competition is that you're, what you're it's, saying it's is that it's a collaborate. It's a whole collaborative ecosystem of creative people that is that is building here, and I think that is one think of the most attracting that kind yeah, of, and kind of, of attracting people. that and that is that is beautiful mm -hmm. now how to mm -hmm. 
tap that and how it's to very important. how to get the business uh, out of it and all that that's the next step next step yeah. so um, is it true what she said that you draw a stone and you will find a creative person yeah. well i mean yes. i <laughs> yeah. love to meet these creative <laughs> yes. people yeah. of course and you know yeah. invite them for our show in fact yeah. so yeah, but um, it's it's very heartening to know that Goa is becoming home and welcoming all these the, yeah. uh, creative uh, individuals. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said that because these individuals are coming here, obviously they must be starting their own, you know, um, initiatives, their own businesses. So are they generating work for the Goans? And if they are, is there a particular skill set that we need to have to get into this space? Um, yes, uh, they are generating jobs for Goans, but uh, the thing is that right now this it's still individuals, so it's small by nature. It's not it's not something you could look at and say, okay, unless it's an IT company, because IT companies, uh, the ones that do coding or uh, are exporting their work. That's a different ball game, game, and Goa has a lot of it, and Goa is employing a lot of people in that space. Right. Uh, in the other fields, it's still small, as in fragmented. So, um, but yes, they are training a lot of Goans. I know, in my own studio, I have taken on a lot of local talent who don't necessarily know what design is, but who are just eager to learn. Mechanical engineers, graphic designers, or people who who have not even gone through that kind of training, but they want to learn. And they, they pick up so beautifully in a couple of months, and then they can be placed or they go places. Right. So in that sense, yes. But um, So what would you say is this, what is the skill set now um, that you're looking for? If you want to imply, you said there are mechanical engineers who are there, but besides having that degree, as a mechanical engineer, there must be some skill set that you would be looking for. Okay, so with all my experience, it's like this. Uh, ideally, you need somebody who understands the design thought process. That's an ideal situation. And uh, that can actually um, visualize what you have in mind. Uh, besides that, though, I think most important is somebody who would like to learn, who is eager to learn. And uh, that has been my mantra now. I, that's really the first attitude that I like to see. And then, of course, there's like priorities. I mean, can, do you know what design is? Can you use those tools without me having to teach you again? You know, so that saves time for so me. So you are looking at quick learners as well? I, people who are willing to learn. Enthusiastic people. Yes. Right? people <clears throat> that's one of the things that as uh, design firm owners and all, we always look, whether it's Goa, whether, when it, whether it was Bombay, <clears throat> degrees beyond a point don't ma matter too much True. because degrees are just a proof that you've True. done it True. and True. maybe you've done it very well, very yes. good. But the, are this, you able this, to apply it? Yeah, are you able to apply it? Show us what you, what you like I also, all, like my one of my first employees was one guy who, uh, he, he was very creative with chalk. <laughs> he used mm. to do yeah. things with chalk, and I realized that he can use creativity, creativity in yeah. set design yeah. because he could make, he could he could make. Those were times before three D printing what, what and all that. What do you mean he was creative? As in he, he would make many chalk things and all that, and he, it was a very good talent. But once you know that he's got talent and he's got yeah. visualization, yeah. now I can teach him AutoCAD and he'll be yeah. very good at that also. I, I can teach him whatever I can needs to be taught. He, these are all tools. The creativity and the whole uh, aptitude. Enthusiasm. Uh, yeah, and aptitude is one of the yeah. more important words yes. actually yes. now. Yes. I just yes. uh, suddenly remembered because that's what we're looking for when we're interviewing people. Yeah. Enthusiasm mm -hmm. and ap aptitude. Yeah. Having a design degree doesn't mean anything because yeah. I've, yeah. I've had trainees that come in that uh, you know, are so set in their ways and they've come from the top design schools. So in fact, it was like, hey, I don't want to hire anyone from these design schools anymore because they are, they've become so set. I mean, this is what can happen. So really mm. it's aptitude. Yeah. One is looking at aptitude. Yeah. and uh, So it is true that sometimes to learn you have to unlearn, am I right? Mm. Oh, always. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes? Always. A good designer needs to do that every day, I Every think. day. <laughs> that is the yeah. design process. Yeah, you start that the day as if process. nothing happened before. <laughs> nothing right. has ever happened before. Yeah. That's amazing. So um, how is a design fraternity in Goa? How are they? How are you know? How are they um, operating, and how are they promoting design? Is there um, 
any examples you can give us to help us understand this revenue? Um, well, like, like I said, I mean, we are, um, things are changing and we are actually in the middle of change. So we, the design fraternity is not really organized, okay? Uh, but we do have uh, things that have started like there's the Association of Designers of India, uh, which is an India-wide thing and we've started the Goa chapter. Um, there are uh, efforts like there's the Kokum Design Trust, which, which you I are had a part spoke, of, yes. Yeah, I had spoken yes. about, which is where uh, a lot of creative people have come together thinking that, hey, look, let's deal with so-called wicked problems. That means design in the public domain or things that we could not do individually in our studios. Can you give us an example, please? Um, well, simple things like, I mean, can you... Uh, an open-ended question, how do you encourage somebody to separate garbage? That is a design problem. And if you have, um, uh, you know, good designers working on it, uh, you can actually nudge people in the right direction, whether it is marketing, whether it is simply the, the way the garbage bin is made, uh, so that it doesn't break or doesn't look dirty or encourages children to sort of play with it. You know, like abroad you had this thing of basketball, can I aim for a hoop? You know, so I have to get the garbage in and not outside. So these are all ways in which um, uh, design can help. So the Kokum Design Trust was looking at that and how do you nudge government also to work on policy. Uh, so yeah, there are uh, so, things uh, like that. But, but it's very important that um, the designers, because the communities are still forming, uh, the, the formal communities are still forming, mm. otherwise the creativity is all around. Yeah. But as designers, uh, at least all of us who've been working for a very long time, we have been involved in our own uh, separate ways, uh, like in uh, she's been doing all the stuff that uh, with Kokum and uh, many other organizations. Yes. I, I started two uh, initiatives uh, last year. One was called Make in Goa, which the idea was to get uh, people who are making products in Goa onto a platform where they interact with designers. So that we can actually, if we do this in a couple of times, and the idea was it's going to be a biannual festival, but the first one we did in Jan, and then COVID happened. Mm -hmm. But we'll resume that. But the idea was to help uh, the help get design onto uh, in the normal in the everyday sphere of life, where either it could be startups or it could be some people even doing jewelry at home and they want to showcase, and we would get designers to interact with them and maybe help them uh, build more. So that was one. And the other initiative was uh, towards the end, uh, no, it, uh, towards uh, July, August in last year, was, uh, it's called Let's Solve Your Problem. And the idea was to fi find what are the problems people are facing uh, due because of COVID and stuff. Right. And what are the opportunities based on that. And then we work on the opportunities. And the uh, uh, concept was that each problem that we identified, two problems at the end of it, each problem was uh, would be would have one designer and one engineer or a team of engineers working on it together, and two projects are being developed right now. And uh, and this was in uh, uh, like I'm a mentor at uh, Fire, uh, which is the forum for innovation and incubation research and education, uh, research and entrepreneurship in uh, Fatoda. So uh, with with them they helped organize it. The idea I, I put together. And I'm mentoring this project as well. And we've come up with two very, as in these guys have come up with two very nice projects. Soon, maybe in a month or so, we'll actually put them out. But these will be very good examples of design and engineering put uh, together. And one of the projects which was uh, where the engineers, uh, engineering team was part of the DBC college, uh, they're still in college. They put it out in a competition. They won the national competition with that <laughs> project. Oh, <thank> you. <laughs> so, how did you get uh, DBC involved in this? I mean, did you I, go and I teach got them Fire or? involved with it, and DBC is uh, at Fire, okay. uh, as in Fire is on DB, with DBC on same campus and all that. So, they are part of it, and I know the principal very well. And I reach out to colleges immediately when there's some idea because it's always nice to work with colleges and with that uh, enthusiasm. Do, do you think that if your work as designers, your work hand in hand with schools and colleges, we mm. will have even more creative people, not just for design, but in different other fields. Mm. Um, possible? Is it possible? I always maintain that uh, design has to be taught right in the beginning in schools uh, because it's, it's a way of thinking. Uh, it's, it's a value system almost. 
I it mean, is. the way the process is. And um, uh, I think it needs, the earlier it is introduced, the better. Because then you never get stuck uh, with only one kind of thinking or one, one view. You understand that there are many ways around something and you can actually get out of very so, sticky so, situations. So, um, Rebini, if you were given the opportunity to mm. pick uh, some schools and you were told you can go to the schools twice a week, and you can interact with the students. What is the first thing you would teach? Because I'm sure our visitors would love to know. What is it that you would like to teach uh, the students? Of course, as they go to higher classes, I'm sure it'll become a little more complex, but the basic things that you would teach children about uh, design, what would that be? That would be the first part of the design process, which is that um, listen to others, look and evaluate and do not put your pen to paper, do not put forward your point of view until you have spent a month studying this Tried issue. Tried and tested. Yeah. Do not, do not, no, do not, the do not force your opinion first. If someone comes to you with an issue or a problem or something you have to do, you spend time studying all the factors, again the helicopter view. And empathy. Empathy. Yeah. Look at the people using it. I mean if I just give you the word garbage, Besides the garbage you see, it is the, the, it's, it has a starting point, it has an ending point, there is government policy, there are, there are municipal workers, uh, you know, right down to the design of your pavement or the industry that is pushing out this stuff. This all is Everyone part is of involved. the thing. So you need to actually put down these, these little boxes that all these are involved and then you need to go and spend a day understanding all this from everyone's point of view and then you start you put forward your opinion your, or your design or your what you need to do um, and your design problems are broad it'll be things like this like yes. my favorite thing is um, can you uh, can you can you design something to reduce corruption <laughs> so, yeah, I know you know, I have a very, I, I very smart design. reply to I that, but I'm design. not because we no. are on air. No, but I, I'm not going to I say that. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 no, there are ways. There are no. ways, right? But it is, you, it's, a, it's a broad thing, yes. but there's you realize there are components to it, and if you nudge certain things, you can reach where you want to reach. Yes. So. There's a simple way of, it's, it's just a law. It's a, if a law can be passed that there's a CCTV always on in all government offices, there'll be no corruption. For all you <laughs> but know, <they're> <laughs> that, that CCTV will get robbed. Yeah, so, so, yeah, no. so I'm saying that's why, see, so if, if you did a study beforehand, you'd also know that maybe it would get robbed, yes. right? So you wouldn't just blindly, the, the CCTV is actually what yeah, yeah, you would, would be the first. It. No, <laughs> it's, it's the first thought, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's just for yeah, fun, but it's yeah. the first thought yeah. that yes. comes forward. But the idea is to spend time and, and yeah. figure out all the points yeah. and then come up. Yes, and children so yes. come up with fantastic, fantastic. ideas. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm telling you, they come up yeah. with such innovative ideas, yeah. you will not believe it. Yeah. Yeah. And right now with the, with the uh, online classes going on, I'm sure parents mm. and teachers uh, watching will agree with me. They have such innovative ways yeah. of just logging in and then they are everywhere, all around yeah, the yeah, world. Yeah. <laughs> you won't believe it and they are innovative. So, yeah. yes, I do agree that, uh, you know, um, my, my question to you is, we, we, you know, in your, the introduction I introduced, I said something about your website and uh, there is a book Revani has got which is read and, you know, staring at me and saying, look at me. <laughs> so can you tell us about this um, book that you have here? Yeah. So uh, the thing is, uh, design is, is quite a broad subject and you can read about it at various levels. But um, looking at our audience, I just thought uh, this might be an interesting thing to start with. Uh, it just, it explains a lot of things in simple speak and uh, at the same time has uh, very interesting examples. So this is a good way to start. Yeah. And um, what about your website that, w what do you share on your website? Right? You're talking about the, um, the, so, uh, the social design library. Yes, not in. yes. Yeah, so this is part of that, uh, the whole thing of design in the public domain where we, as Kokum Design Trust, we started with a festival and uh, try to look at wicked problems like this, mm -hmm. like I had mentioned. Um, but as an ongoing thing, because again the pandemic uh, put a spanner in the works, we, uh, we did realize that 
A lot of people are doing work, but it's unsung. And unless it comes out in glossy magazines or looks really sexy, uh, people don't really know what that good about. design is happening mm -hmm. or that it can help. Socially relevant stuff. It's like he was saying, you know, make, uh, make in Goa, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, socially relevant stuff. So um, we've put out a call to most uh, people in India to submit things that they have done which have which are design related and and have some impact social impact and those are the projects we are putting up on this website we're also asking them to detail out how they got their funding uh, etc because these are usually from grants you right. know, this is not mainstream and we're hoping that finally the government can sit up and take notice because some things are scalable and uh, maybe then government puts forward its own funding to 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 uh, you know to bring this whole field up in the design in the social and public domain. So that brings so. me to to a very very pertinent question: that are there policies by the government that actually encourage designers and creativity and can help society at large? Are there any policies, and especially in Goa, since we are in Goa, and this is our home now? What are what is the uh, Goan government doing for us that uh, for the for the you know design fraternity especially where we can y'all can spread your design ideas and use it for the benefit of the Goans do you want to say something I, I'll add to that afterwards yeah uh, I don't know if much is being done uh, the fault may not totally lie with the government because uh, as designers only there's not been a unified voice which is loud enough to be heard and uh, that that is one thing that needs to be there and that's something that is building with the like the association of designers of india and other bodies who are now trying to like uh, do this job which is a very important job uh, but otherwise uh, as because i uh, got started a new startup last year i realized that there are a lot of things that are happening from startup india and all that where they are uh, a lot of synergy is possible, a uh, lot of opportunities are possible, but nothing that is uh, very clearly for design as right. such. And that's required. And if that can happen, that'll be good. But as of now, uh, I don't know offhand even if I could say what is exactly that's required, but maybe some thought process about that uh, will be needed. Well, it's like the, go uh, the government started Make in India, and I would prefer that to be Design in India because there's more value. I mean, uh, if you look at sweatshops, they're always undercutting each other. But if you look at uh, the value that design adds, like to to uh, to the Apple, I mean, to the company or uh, you know, design-led companies, you look at their valuations today; they're really high, and it's because of the uh, the, the kind of soft things that's gone into it. So um, I think the government has schemes for things that it has noticed in the past. Um, something closest to design would have been maybe the craft sector. Okay, so you do have schemes and things like that. Um, I think they it, it's it's funding that's always a problem. And if the government can have a scheme whereby they help uh, MSMEs, that means small scale right. industry that requires design to get a leg up, if they have a, f a, a body of funds which can um, provide a loan to MSMEs so that they can afford designers to give it their all. And once the product is on the market and it's on a roll, then you're earning the money and you can pay it back. So just like they've launched these very low uh, percentage uh, loan schemes for COVID uh, hit people, mm -hmm. I mean, they can do something like this to bring small scale industry and designers together. So they take the load um, and everybody, it's, it's a win-win. They're doing it in the UK. They're doing it in a lot of uh, countries. So and since, like you I, said, I, we have so many designers in, in, yeah. in Goa, I think we need to take advantage of that. We should. I hope uh, the past that we are watching and listening and get some ideas from mm. our designers here. N now that you have made Goa your home, what is it that you would like to see as far as design is concerned, along with sustainability and following all the green practices, what would you like to see in Goa? Linked to one thing that you asked, uh, mentioned in the beginning, uh, <laughs> somewhere in the middle was uh, when you said that there's good design all around. 
I would like to see good design all around. <laughs> so that, <laughs> yeah. how how Which means, how can we? For example, yes. How can so we how do we, that? How can we do that? Uh, I do remember you've said it loud and clear. <laughs> Everyone has heard yeah. that. Okay. No, because everything is missing. The uh, pavements are missing. The road is higher than the outside. So car, people keep falling. The the there's no bus stops. The, everything is missing, and and all this could uh, see if there are when you uh, go abroad to some of the places where it, where design is prevalent, then it's everywhere. It's like uh, you everything is comfortable because when you need it, it's there. Uh, if you want to throw a paper wrapper. There, there, is there, there is a bin there. When you want to know about which bus to take, there is a board there, and all the information, everything is there, and that is what I'm. I hope that if, and Goa that way uh, linked to the previous thing about the government. This is a very good opportunity. I, what I realize here in Goa to access the government or access powers is very easy, very and it's so difficult in other parts of the country because so big and out here. It's just one, one or two phone calls, two connections away to reach anybody, and that's a very nice opportunity that we all have, and uh, hopefully that is something that as designers we can all. It's it's my yeah, dream. Also do something. Yeah, yeah, it's it's my dream to see a little more, um, you know, action-oriented policies um, from the government side. So I guess we need to push more for yeah. that. It, it's like even a simple thing. Um, I mean, uh, tenders. Uh, even today, I work with uh, the railways through uh, an intermediary company, but the tendering is always uh, so myopic, if if you may call it. It, it. There's nothing called design in it, and they mm -hmm. want design like from scratch. They don't want to pay for it. It's not part of the tendering. So invariably, who misses out is the designer because nobody wants to pay for design. Why? Because right from the top, it's only about I want the finished product. I I don't know what goes into it. And there's nothing for design. It's in fact lowest tender, right? So mm. it doesn't. Design is not about who's cheapest. It's it's really about who can give you what you need, maximum right? Maximum value. Maximum mm. value for that. It's so. Um, it's a long way to go. I mean, it's yeah. my dream to see some help from some changes yeah. but, over yeah. there. But the fault lies with us also, also as designers, which we have to do enough. Exactly, and we have to and push enough. Needs Deeper, to be done. Like you said, opportunities have to open. Like you yeah. just yeah. said, that maybe. Your designers need, to, and not just designers. I think the creative fraternity needs to get together, and not just speak in a louder voice. I think you need to shout out. Yeah. You know, and Goa is a small place. It will yeah. echo. I'm yeah. sure it will. Yeah. Yeah. And along with them, I'm sure we, all of us viewers, and everyone who's listening and watching, I'm sure we can support them in every way possible. Yeah. Well, we're we thankful for for, yeah. for this interview today. Yeah. At least it's reached the stage. It should have reached mm. here a long time ago, but. Yeah. But it's super. It's remember, a, yeah, it's you, you remember, mm. you just said everyone is just two calls away. So Deepak <laughs> should have called me, and so should uh, Remini. That's true. That is true. Just two calls away, and yeah, we would true. be there. You know, we yeah. at the Navin Times are always on the lookout at how we can make Goa better, how we can help our viewers and our readers. Yeah. In fact, I would like to take this opportunity to tell you that since 2011, we have been organizing events every single month we have completed i'm so proud to say nice. we have completed 110 events and we have now recently since the last month also included podcasts okay. so oh, nice. we are listening you two calls deepaks i'm quoting him all the time now two calls away uh, two calls away, <laughs> yeah, two calls away <laughs> and we are listening we would love to hear from you your ideas, your suggestions, we always, we read them. We never ignore them, we read them. And we have an entire list, a database of ideas that uh, we can use and we call people, uh, our guests accordingly. Is there anything you would like to say uh, to our audience before we say bye to everyone? Oh, I <laughs> I think <laughs> it's been a privilege for us to be here yeah. and talk about design and maybe this is this is the first step I, I guess someday we <laughs> will be able to say this is the first step to reaching out to the right yeah. people and yeah. making the noise that is required to make that change happen. Right. Yeah. Don't worry, so, we are with yeah. you. We will come with our spoons and uh, thalis <laughs> and yes. stuff like that, yes. but definitely. <laughs> Uh, before I say thank you to our audience, I would also like to say thank you to you. It has been a pleasure. It's been mm -hmm. fun uh, talking to you. I've learned a lot, and I'm sure 
all our viewers have learned a lot. We want to make Goa better, and we need people like Rebni and Deepak, and of course you. It is not possible without you. Yeah. So your uh, support and encouragement from you uh, at every step will make Goa better than what it is today. So thank you for watching. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It has thank been a you. pleasure. Hope to see you again soon. Thank, thank you, you so much. And thank you.